Does anyone remember the chokehold that this particular tattoo had on all of us during 2010? Now, I'm not one to judge, okay? Because I'm pretty sure that I've got Don't Stop Believing tattooed on my back. Hey there guys, my name's Megan if you're new here and if not, welcome back to Megan True Crime where each week we'll discuss a true crime case and you guys can feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments box below. Oh, just pop the girls back in. If you like all things true crime, supernatural, UFO, conspiracy theory and all that good stuff in between then please hit that subscribe button. I'll be here for you each week with our true crime killer weekend and on and off every couple of Wednesdays with our Weirdo Wednesdays where we'll discuss something spooky I've heard. I will leave a small disclaimer at the beginning of this episode. It does involve details of stalking and the threat of physical and sexual violence. If that's a trigger point for you, then please feel free to turn away now. And remember, if you have nothing nice to say... You're obviously in the wrong place. Look, I'm even wearing fluffy socks. Are you okay? This week's episode is kind of a true crime slash weirdo Wednesday mashup, so I thought it'd be fun for us to have some cheap booze and some good old fashioned sleepover fun. Pillow fight! Just kidding, we're gonna be talking about stalkers. And I'm not talking about some sexy Hollywood actor who apparently becomes invisible because he puts on a baseball cap. Were you watching me? I'm talking basement dwelling mama's boys like the dude from the bodyguard. No, no, no. Now I'm sure that most of us have had that hairs on the back of your neck feeling that someone may be watching you. But can our bodies really sense when we're being looked at? The controversial theory was first explored by psychologist Edward B. Titchener in 1898. However, despite several case studies throughout the past 125 years, there is still no definitive proof that we can tell when someone's watching us if the watcher is out of our eye line. Human gaze detection certainly has its limits as we can only detect the gaze of another if they're within four degrees of our central fixation point. Of course we might catch changes in someone's body language from the corner of our eye, but is there really some spooky sixth sense that allows us to detect when we're being watched? Not really. Scientific studies on the matter yield only 50% accuracy amongst test subjects. So chances are if you've experienced that Michael Jackson somebody's watching me sensation only to turn around and see that someone indeed is looking right at you, you're more than likely suffering from something called hypervigilance. Hypervigilance is extremely common in trauma and abuse survivors and even though it's not a disorder in itself, it is a symptom of other psychological conditions. Those who've experienced hypervigilance, like me, live in a constant state of elevated awareness. Does it sound crazy? Yes, and it's also a massive pain in the arse for the person living with it, but hypervigilance does have its benefits. In female self-defence classes, it's almost encouraged and I have to agree that it's better to be safe than sorry or worse, dead. Of course, in person, predators are easier to detect, whether that's a big heavy jacket on a hot summer's day, or a hand that never leaves his pocket, or simply a cold blank stare. But for some, the thrill of the chase is far better than the satisfaction of the attack. Some beasts prefer to track their prey from afar, every so often breaching the surface just to let their victims know who's in control. So what do you do when the police won't take you seriously but you're certain you can feel someone's eyes fixed on you? Well sweet cheeks, maybe it's time to buy some pepper spray, draw those curtains and have 999 on speed dial because you might just be dealing with a psychotic stalker. (laughs) 
Since the beginning of the 16th century, the word stalker has been a part of our vocabulary. Derived from the Middle English word stalker, it was originally used to describe hunters and poachers. Of course, nowadays the noun has much more sinister undertones. In 1990, the first anti-stalking law was passed in California, USA, with Queensland, Australia close behind in 1993, and then the UK following suit in 1997. So does that mean the act of stalking is a fairly modern problem? Well, not exactly. For centuries, criminals have been trailing their potential victims as some sort of sick foreplay before the attack. In the autumn of 1888, the serial killer known only as Jack the Ripper stalked his five victims through the streets of London. Much like the California night stalker, Richard Ramirez, Jack watched each woman learning their routines and habits. Up until the early 1990s, the issue of stalking remained a blind spot for law enforcement and still to this day it's extremely difficult to get a conviction. Advances in modern technology haven't exactly helped matters and now these creeps have a whole new way of terrifying the object of their obsession. When we think of the term stalker I'm sure most of us picture your typical celebrity fanatic. You know the one, a skinny white dude wearing a wife beater sticking newspaper cutouts to a threatening letter. Scarily enough, studies show that 79% of celebrities will be targeted by a stalker during their time in the public eye. A-listers such as Sandra Bullock and Selena Gomez have came out publicly about their own traumatic run-ins with stalkers. In the spring of 2014, Shea Cruz, then aged 20, was arrested not once but twice for harassing the Disney pop star. Shea, a homeless drifter, had become infatuated with Selena and in the late March of 2014, he decided to act on his delusional fantasies. Whilst the popular actress was just chilling at home, he managed to gain access to the guest house within her Calabasas estate. Luckily, Selena was in another area of the $4.5 million home at the time of the intrusion and she wasn't physically harmed. Prowler Shea Cruz was arrested for unlawfully entering Selena's Mediterranean-style mansion. Sentenced to 45 days in prison and slapped with a no-contact order, the TV star hoped that she'd heard the last of her stalker. But just two days later, Shea would return to the property only hours after his release from jail. Thank goodness it was rumoured that Selena was not present this time around and Shea was arrested for the second time that week. She was required to complete 180 days within a mental health facility and was unable to go near Selena or her home for an additional 10 years. Despite fitting the property line with large perimeter fencing and top of the range security cameras, the invasion was never far from the singer's mind. So in the August of 2015, she made the tough decision to put her mansion up for sale. Forever the resilient queen, however, after the move, Selena was ready to put the entire ordeal behind her, which is highly commendable, especially when you know that this wasn't the first time she'd been targeted by a desperate predator. Only two and a half years prior, a 46-year-old superfan named Thomas Brodnicki attempted to lie his way onto set when a then 19-year-old Selena was filming in LA. The middle-aged creep show made the 2,000-mile journey from his home in Illinois after telling his therapist in a session that he'd had conversations with God about killing Selena Gomez. Each of the three times he tried to gain access to the closed film set, Thomas was thankfully rebuffed. Not only had he been threatening to kill her, but he'd also set up a Selena Gomez stan account on Twitter. Now, some of those tweets are deeply disturbing, especially when you consider that this is a 46-year-old ex-con talking about a teenage stranger. On the 18th of October 2011, he posted, Selena will soon be mine. Winky face. Horrifying? Yes, 
But this wasn't Thomas's first rodeo. He was arrested in 2001 on an unknown charge and again in 2008 for cyber stalking a woman in Illinois. For the online harassment of the local woman, he was sentenced to three years behind bars and made to undergo psychiatric evaluation. Upon his release, he was yet again held under psychiatric observation when he shouted at several strangers in the street that he was going to and I quote, scratch their eyes out. Good baby, very good. In this TMZ interview, the unhinged Thomas discusses his motivations behind his recent move to LA and his spiritual connection to the singer. So you're gonna stay away from Selena now? Well, of course, there's a restraining order now, isn't there? Uh, at least 100 yards away, I have good word that she's in Canada right now. I'm a whole country away. Yeah. Uh, your shrink and detective say you had calm conversations with God about killing Selena. Selena, are they lying? Or? That is an absolute lie, sir. Okay. So did you have conversations with God at all? Well, I've had conversations with God since 2001. They locked me up for it, and then 28 days later, they set me free, and I haven't had conversations with God since. All right. Um, your lawyer told you to like get the f out. Like, and I read really, like he like told you at the court. Um, what do you plan on doing now? I have no plans except to do exactly what God's will is. And also, I'd like to add that perhaps in my estimation only, perhaps in your estimation, Selena Gomez and I, perhaps unbeknownst to her at her tender age, are in fact the holy chosen ones of God. Gotcha. So, all right. So. I've noticed the SoCal shirt. You enjoying? You like? You like California? Nice place. Yes, uh, I came out here chiefly for the weather, and I thought I might run into Selena. And frankly, I'm not overly concerned whether I ever meet her in the flesh yeah. because it may be like Scripture says, "No man has seen the face of God." Maybe us being together is too much like seeing the face of God. Got you. But if you were to meet up with her, would you like to settle down in California or Chicago? Settle down. Wow. Well, I certainly wouldn't want to settle down in Chicago. Actually, my favorite scenario, and God doesn't reveal everything to me, his ways are past finding out, that's scripture. One of my favorite scenarios is she flies out here on March 23rd, 2016, we start seeing each other, and we don't even touch each other for a month. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, um, Southern California, big thing is surfing. They say God loves surfing. Have you, have you tried, thought about taking up surfing? No, not at all. I, I'm very anti-material. I don't like even touching anything that isn't. Yeah. Selena Gomez. Yeah, I got you. I got you. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your time, sir. Right, have a good one. Now, this man is clearly mentally disturbed, but one thing he said in this clip really stood out to me as a giant red flag. Do you guys remember our episode, A Killer Calls, where we discussed the murder of Sherry Smith? If not, I do suggest you go take a peek because Sherry's killer, Larry Jean Bell, was the ultimate psychotic stalker. But anywho, after abducting and murdering Sherry in 1985, he repeatedly made phone calls to Sherry's mother, Hilda, spewing random quotes about God, etc. But if you've got a good memory, you might recall that he repeatedly said the words, Sherry and I were chosen. We were chosen. This video of Thomas Brodnicki just brought my mind right back to that. And I don't know about you guys, but I got literal, as the crime junkie girls say, full body chills. Wildly enough though, in the November of 2011, a judge moved to dismiss the charges against Thomas as there wasn't enough sufficient evidence that Thomas intended to convey those threats directly to Selena. So in a nutshell, it's legally okay to run around telling everyone you're going to kill someone as long as you don't tell them you're going to kill them directly? Oh, well, we can't be totally unfair. I'm sorry, I was wrong. Because they did order him to stay at least 100 yards away from Selena at all times. And I think we both know that that piece of paper probably went down the crapper with the rest of his sanity.
Knock on wood though, I've not heard of any recent incidents involving Thomas Brodnicki and any female superstars, so let's just pray that he's putting all of that stalker energy into something worthwhile, like animal portrait painting. Now, whilst on the topic of celebrity stalkers, I will touch on the amount of backlash famous victims of stalking seem to receive. But first, let's journey back to 6.30am on the morning of June 8th, 2014, when Hollywood actress Sandra Bullock is startled out of her bed by a strange noise coming from upstairs. As she crept closer to her home gym on the third floor of her Beverly Hills mansion, the noises grew louder. She opened the door to find 39-year-old Joshua James Corbett standing there wearing grey sweatpants and a crazed look on his face. Fearing for her life, Sandra locked herself in another room and dialed 911. LAPD officers arrived on scene within minutes and arrested Joshua James. After police were permitted access to Joshua's home, Sandra's fears would only worsen. There they discovered dozens of illegally obtained firearms, including a machine gun. Law enforcement discovered several letters in which Joshua refers to Sandra as his wife and expresses his wish to help her raise her then three-year-old son. Even more disturbing were the contents of an airport hangar rented by the psycho stalker. A small plane. Was he planning on abducting the practical magic star and her son for a new life elsewhere? Only three days prior to the break-in, Josh had followed Sandra to the American Film Institute Gala. Amongst a crowd of admirers gathered outside the Dolby Theatre, the A-lister stalker lay in wait, hoping to catch a glimpse of her in that stunning cobalt blue v &A asymmetric gown. But it wasn't enough just to look at her. And that Tuesday, he would scale two large walls and break into the $16 million home via a glass door in the ground floor sunroom. Joshua accepted a plea deal and was sentenced to five years probation and mandatory treatment at a mental health facility. Sandra's stalker was released from said facility in the June of 2017. Under the agreement, he would continue treatment through an outpatient program. He refused to return. After a standoff with police in May 2018, Joshua took his own life, never to darken Sandra's doorstep ever again. In later interviews, Sandra would discuss suffering from PTSD and symptoms of hypervigilance after the intrusion. She did keep a hold of her 8,000 square foot home, but admitted that she just wasn't the same and that she'd even developed alopecia as a result of extreme stress and anxiety. Most were sympathetic towards Sandra and Selena regarding their ordeal. However, there will always be the rotten apple in the bunch. Many fans commended the women for their bravery. Others expressed their opinion that if you don't want to be harassed, don't be a celebrity. Some of those little buggers took to the Daily Mail's comment section with phrases such as, I'm sure you can dry your eyes with your millions, and I don't blame him. Just a blatant display of victim blaming. And I would love to be able to say that we've come such a long way since 2014, but we really haven't. The world of social media has created a safe space for trolls and stalkers alike. A place where these nutbags can watch your every move and spew their venom behind the anonymity of a tiny little phone screen. I bet you that's not all that's tiny when it comes to these trolls. Daily, singers, actresses and content creators like myself are met with nasty comment after nasty comment, but Possibly even worse than that are the messages we receive if, God forbid, we decide to bite back. It's that mentality of, if you provide entertainment to the public, then by definition, the public own you and deserve access to every aspect of your life, and then they can judge it accordingly. This twisted notion that we own our creatives is exactly what leads to these kind of delusional fantasies in the first place. Now, in no way, shape, or form am I calling myself a celebrity, but I myself 
still receive those DMs, you know, guys asking where are you from, what school did you go to, when are you leaving your fiancé? Are you serious right now, bro? And I'm also well aware that now more than ever, my experiences are just the tip of the iceberg. Only recently I came across an article that, without a word of a lie, scared me right out of my tartan knickers. Here I was scrolling online looking for some examples of stalking for today's episode when I came across Alexandra Saper's bone chilling story. Travel influencer 31 year old Alexandra Saper is a globe trotter who boasts over 102,000 followers on Instagram. She's been documenting her incredible life in Bali since ditching the rat race to move there from Washington DC five years ago. Her Instagram grid, if not slightly depressing for us here in the pissing rain UK, is a charming collage of yoga poses, sunset pics and boat rides. Imagine the photo version of an inspirational quote, that's exactly what it's like. I might sound a wee bit bitter, but who am I kidding? If I could afford to be off in the jungle playing Tarzan and Jane, I would too. Alexandra's carefully curated content and travel vlogs have allowed her the freedom to live island life to the fullest. They've also gifted her with a handful of die-hard stands. Now, if like me you walked with the dinosaurs and you're not entirely sure where the term stand comes from, you may be surprised to know that it originated from the 2000s hip-hop banger Stan by my personal childhood crush Eminem. Thanks to Marshall Mathers' song about a crazed fan, we now have a whole new word to describe those super enthusiastic supporters. Now a popular girl like Alexandra Saper, she be receiving a lot of direct messages, so much so it's hard to keep track. However, in early 2022, she received a DM on Instagram she would never forget. This can't wait. You're so right. You drive me round the bend. You make my body go absolutely crazy. And I'm going to spend the rest of my life with you. If that included kidnapping, so be it. You've shown me who I am in ways I could never have imagined. I'm quitting this traffic job tomorrow. I'm getting to that island as soon as I can. This process is out of control. And holy hell, I want you to be my queen. I want to respect and serve you. But that poem... I mean, I get it. The darkness has rules for me sometime, and these messages and my work have brought me back to the light. I'll never forget what's happened here. This is electric. Whatever you want, I don't care. I'm staying in this boat and keeping this hurricane going. I know you feel the same. And I'll lay off the sex talk videos. See you soon. Taken aback, Alexandra blocks her harasser, reporting his account to Instagram in the process. Instantly, he becomes enraged, sending several messages from other alias accounts. The content of those varies from calling her his Spartan queen to alleged threats of sexual violence. The accused stalker, 38-year-old traffic management employee Robert James Keating, continued to bombard Alexandra with sexually explicit videos and images all the way from West Sussex in England. As a law school graduate and women's right advocate, she takes Robert's threats seriously, but the 8,000 miles of distance between them brings Alexandra a tiny piece of comfort. It's not as if she's gonna walk down the street and find Robert hiding in the bushes, you know, she's in Bali, thousands of miles and an ocean away. But on the 29th of January, 2023, everything changed when Robert James Keating landed in Bali, Indonesia. Shortly after arriving on the island, he chose to commemorate this special moment by sending a selfie to Alexandra. Upon receiving yet another unwanted image from this creep, she wasn't 100% surprised that he was there. Only one month before, he'd sent her a screenshot of his flight confirmation. What did shock her was the street name visible in the background of Robert's pick. There he was, 
crazed grin and all, only a couple of minutes away from her home. In that moment, Alexandra knew that she was no longer dealing with some empty threats. He was here, and he was here for her. Always confident and level-headed in the past, Alexandra found herself experiencing emotions she'd never felt before. She suffered from panic attacks and anxiety, constantly looking over her shoulder, fearing that Robert was lurking nearby. Alexandra turns to Indonesian authorities for help, but she would be bitterly disappointed. Despite his year-long reign of terror, Robert remained a free man, with nothing, not so much as a piece of paper, standing between him and Alexandra. Over the past 12 months, he'd uncovered her private email address and phone number. She had no doubt that it would only be a matter of time before he figured out her home address. The Phoenix-born influencer knew she had to get out of there and fast, so after shoving some clothes frantically into a bag, she headed to a nearby hotel. The temporary move didn't really help matters. She was unable to sleep, constantly on edge, terrified of what Robert might do next. Unfortunately, Alexandra was right to worry, as now living only a couple of miles away, Robert was upping the ante, sending photos like this, along with further threats of kidnapping and violence. Alexandra needed to put as much distance between she and Robert as possible, even if that meant sacrificing the amazing life she'd built for herself in Bali. So she packed her things and moved to an undisclosed location, taking a break from social media and her career as a life coach. This once confident, educated powerhouse of a woman was now trapped in a bubble of pure fear. Understandably, she grew angry. Angry that this complete stranger had forced her to uproot her entire life. So, on the 15th of February 2023, Alexandra decided she was done being afraid. And she took to Instagram to share her story with her hundreds of thousands of followers. For the last two and a half weeks, I've been targeted by a deranged, delusional stalker who has flown across the world from his home in London to Bali, threatening to find me, kidnap me, rape me, shove me in a suitcase, tie me up in his Bali villa, rape other women while forcing me to watch out of punishment for not reciprocating or obeying or responding to him. For context, I don't know this man at all. I've never met him. I've never spoken to him. I've never replied to his hundreds of emails and videos messages that he's sent over the last year. I've blocked him on social media, but he's made fake accounts, so he's been able to continue stalking my whereabouts. A few months ago, as I was deleting these emails, I noticed some that made me really concerned. Emails where he was talking about coming to Bali, coming to find me and kidnap me. And then three weeks ago, he sent me emails with flight confirmations and photos of him in Bali, where I live, some taken on the same street where I live close to my house. He also sent dozens of videos he's recorded of himself over the last six months, threatening in graphic and horrific detail the physical and sexual violence he intended to commit against me. I sent all of this to the police in Indonesia and the UK. I notified the UK and US embassies. I met with police chiefs, immigration officers, the US ambassador and head of security. I've had friends and followers in the US and UK reach out to contacts high up in the government and law enforcement to try to get some help. And so far, what I know is that the investigation is still ongoing and that's all I can say. But in the meantime, my business came to a screeching halt. I could no longer go anywhere alone or stay at my house I moved in with a friend and completely stopped going out in public or being alone and I eventually started having panic attacks for the first time in my life. I know I'm not the first woman he's done this to and I know I won't be the last unless he's stopped. So I've essentially made it my full-time job to get help for me and to make sure I'm safe from him as long as possible and other women are safe from him after me. Of course, you know that my business is largely on Instagram and I've loved being able to share my life and my travels with you, making these connections and the impact I've had, the opportunities that have come from this. And I know there are risks, but I'm also not at all interested in letting one abusive stalker derail the incredible life and business I've built for myself over the last five years. 
because the truth is way before social media or Instagram or live streaming, way before short skirts and any of that shit that society likes to blame victims for, women's bodies were victimized by men who felt entitled to having absolute power over them and refused to take no for an answer. I've heard from so many women in the last few weeks who have their own stories of stalking from ex-partners, friends, neighbors, employees. So although it might be easy and tempting to write this off as a unique problem for social media influencers, a problem that could never touch you or someone you love, that's actually not at all true. And absolutely no woman or man deserves to experience this kind of horror and abuse. As of April this year, Alexandra is no longer in hiding, but she is yet to return to her home in Bali. Robert's recent Instagram stories show that his obsession with Miss Saper is still alive and well, despite his recent arrest in the UK in March. He knows this attention is unwanted and that it's frightening Alexandra, but instead of taking responsibility for his delusional behaviour, he blames it on her quote, dark vibrations. On one of his recent Instagram stories, someone asked, why are you so obsessed with her? Maybe it's time to put yourself in her shoes and leave it alone. To which he replies, yeah, I can see where you're coming from. It's all to do with this dark vibration she has. Did you see that magnet for trouble thing in my highlights? I know this makes me sound like a lunatic. Little bit, Robert. Her inner vibration is so dark for guys like me who have all this intensity. She makes my nervous system go haywire. And this level up thing that she does too has been the biggest killer of my past relationships. Yeah, I have left it alone as soon as I found out this was a negative. Here, he's not only blaming Alexandra for his actions, he's partly holding her responsible for the failure of his past romantic relationships. And this is something we see in C serial killers all the time. It often begins with childhood trauma from a mother or a female guardian, which leads to resentment and destructive romantic relationships, and it finally progresses into a total hatred of women. In a lot of his posts, Robert alludes to past childhood trauma. Since he was arrested by Sussex police after arriving back in the UK earlier this month, Robert appears to have quietened down a little, but my fear is if he's not still fixated on her, who else has he switched his obsession to? Like Alexandra mentioned in her 9 minute video, stalkers don't just go for celebrities and influencers, and he could be targeting any one of you out there. Despite the twisted notion that this can only happen to you if you're putting yourself out there in the public eye, the majority of stalking and harassment cases that go to trial involve everyday girls like you and I. According to the National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey, stalking is extremely common and one in six women will be stalked in their lifetime. 89% of femicide victims were stalked prior to their deaths. So as much as we'd like to pretend this is a famous person problem, it really isn't. Because for some, the thrill of the chase never dies. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. For me, it really helps this wee channel on mine. If you're watching for the first time and you know, my plaid pajamas haven't made you feel physically sick, then please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming episodes. I'm praying that this week's episode has made a little bit of sense because if I'm honest, I have the flu and I don't even know if this is a dream right now. Night.